that's part of our job, right? What I don't like is that he pulls his weapon immediately. He would probably be the person tackled if he did that. Hi, my name is Ken Bombase, and I have over 20 years of law enforcement experience. I've led a company as the CEO of Global Threat Solutions. It is a protection firm that provides comprehensive protection services to executives, people of high net worth, and celebrities. And today I'm going to be reviewing movie and TV clips of bodyguard scenes and rating them for realism. P day, you have a pencil. You're never going to be distracted. You don't text, you don't make calls. You're definitely not going to be writing something down while you're driving a client. Protection agents will have what we call like a go bag, a tactical bag, a go bag, and you're going to have everything you need in there. If you'll even put some food, drinks in there. You might have to sit in that vehicle for hours, right? To do your job, you'd have a flashlight. You have your laptop with you. You're going to have your phone, chargers, backup battery chargers, it's something to write with, pens if you have to take notes when, you're, when your principal is giving you some instructions or maybe a staff member. These are just some of the things that you might have with you at any time. And might a protection agent be uh, uh, tasked with watching the principal's dog while they're in a meeting or something? Sure, it does happen. Run! You definitely don't fire warning shots in a situation like this. Uh, I understand it's part of the storyline, but that's something we don't do. Your mission, and this applies to every clip that I'll talk about in any protection operation, is to get the principal off the X, we call it. The X being the location of danger, the immediate vicinity of danger. Our job is to get them out of there as fast as we can, and that's it. Firefights and shootouts, uh, whether in the military or in police, they're chaotic and confusing. When I was in the military, obviously, I was involved in uh, firefights. When I was in, in Iraq as an army officer, I think they did a pretty good job at depicting uh, a shootout like that. For the circumstances he had with a one-man detail, he did the best he could in that situation. Pizza! Run! Some training goes in on their side, too, meaning the principal. So code words, yes, that happens. It could be, maybe you see something that's um, suspicious that they don't know. So you would use a word rather than just say, hey, watch out, there's a threat. I would give it a uh, seven. Ma'am, excuse me, if you don't mind, I suggest you keep moving. I've done a celebrity detail for a big award show. And when my principal exited the vehicle, he decided to run about a half a mile down a street crowded with fans and slapping all of their hands. And I had to run right alongside of them. There was no, there was no telling them not to. La, 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 la. They're not gonna be in a room where the celebrities actually getting changed, but rehearsing, prepping in a green room. Absolutely, you would, you, it's very likely you would have a protection agent in there. Excuse me, miss. I know this isn't the right time, but I have a daughter who wants to be a singer. I was wondering if you had any tips for her. As the CEO of a protection firm, that is what I refer to as a fireable offense. If you do not, as your celebrity client is about to head on stage, stop her in front of a group of all of our staff and ask her for a personal favor or a personal uh, opinion, that is something we do not do. Totally unprofessional on an airstrike and we're waiting and we're waiting <laughs> and then my satellite phone rings yeah who is Hello. it they may not be assigned to go out into the crowd that does not mean you're playing cards in the back room you need to be right backstage monitoring everything not playing cards that part right there i would say is pretty realistic she exits the stage there's a chaos obviously this is a, a large venue big concert there's venue security and venue staff that you have no control over there. So sure, that could happen. What do they do? They move her quickly and professionally out of there. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, they're human and you're human. As long as you're doing your job, um, you know, you could obviously support them to make them feel better during this tough time. I've had scenarios where principals are, are emotional and upset over something that happens. They're afraid, quite frankly. And, and they do show their appreciation. You would just want to guard against 
um, keeping up, keeping boundary stuff. You don't want you don't want to get too close in this industry, so you maintain a certain level of professionalism. I would expect him after that interaction to to let me know about it that it happened. I'll give it a uh, I'll give it a six. I think the fight scene was pretty unrealistic. They're having a, a fist fight in the street. But then another subject who was the driver or someone else is assisting and kicking the person on the ground. Could there be untrained people that call themselves bodyguards that do that sort of thing? Sure. Mm -hmm. No, this is a bad neighborhood. Oh, are you worried about me? I'm fine. It does happen where people can be inebriated. They can be belligerent. You have to remember this person is, all intents and purposes, your boss, the principal. So you may rely on staff members that you work closely with, non-security people who work closely with them, or even family members to intervene. You also want to protect them against things like embarrassment. There's a famous scene where somebody popped out and hit Bill Gates in the face with a pie. That is a tragic fail for a protection team for that to have been able to happen. Was he assassinated? No. But was he embarrassed? Was his... Um, was he not happy with that scenario? Is that a liability to him as a businessman? Sure. Lose it, lose it, lose it. You okay? The way he looks at you? Whatever that is, that's too intense. Of, of course, it could happen. Yeah, you can't leave them during a situation where they could get hurt or they're vulnerable, of course. So yes, might you physically have to? You would, if that's the scenario. And people, let's, you know, principals are people too. Well, I've done a thorough review of both you, huh? and your corporate headquarters. Really? Yes, a comprehensive assessment on a, an estate or residence and the corporate facility, of course we would do that. But what I would say is you would not do it most likely without the principals knowing about it and assisting because you wouldn't have access to everything that you need to really do a comprehensive security assessment. That part of it where he sort of surprised him with it, saying I've already done it, there's only so far you could go. Might you, in a certain scenario, use your body to tackle or, or, um, or at least shield your principal? Sure, that could happen if there's a great enough threat to them. Would you do it in this scenario? Probably not. It's an unrealistic scenario to begin with, but you would probably not do it. It might be the last time you work for them. It's a thinking person's game. This is not a brute force game. You need people with an intellect. You need people who can think on their feet, maintain calm when things get hectic. And that could be not necessarily uh, an immediate threat to your principal. You have developed an entire itinerary for the day. You've done advanced site visits. And in a moment's notice, they said, we changed our mind. Now we're going here to another state. Those are the things you have to be able to adapt and continue seamlessly with your mission. It takes a certain type of person to be able to do this work. You cannot uh, panic easily, you need to be able to maintain calm at all times. Do we have some people in this industry who are 275 pounds and six foot four? Sure. Is that the norm? Absolutely not. You know, you do want someone who's physically fit, who has a good appearance, that they can do this job. Aesthetics are important, especially for many principals. But we do not need somebody who's a bodybuilder, who's got a mixed martial arts fighter necessarily to do this job. That's the one. I don't like zeros. You would want to know as much about them as possible. She even reviewed her social media for anything she might need to know about her lifestyle or any concerns. But also it goes so much deeper than that. We have a, an onboarding process really, where you're going to want to know their blood type. You're going to want to know if they have any medical conditions or allergies. In the modern era, you could find out a lot about people just from open source intelligence, just by using the internet and doing open source searches. Would you stand around looking like a security agent in the corner of the bar watching them or, or in close proximity? No. A lot of times what you would do is go sit at the bar or go sit at your own table, act like you're eating, have a drink, maybe a non-alcoholic drink, and keep an eye on them while looking. It, it's something we would call like covert protection. So you don't want to be overt. Pretty realistic in, in every aspect. I would, I'm going to give it an eight. Executive protection agents don't have hidden exotic weapon vaults 
and that they use to choose their weapons for the day. They definitely don't choose dual silenced pistols. And, and they also don't grab them by the trigger when they pull them out of that vault, which is something we learned day one in the military or in the police service is that uh, they call TF out of TG, keep your trigger finger out of your trigger guard. And he violates every one of those rules. Sometimes we travel in motorcades, more than one vehicle, of course, lead and follow vehicles if the threat's high enough, depending on the size of your detail. They depart and arrive together, however. They don't join the principal's vehicle at high speeds uh, uh, and in very close proximity. Get the engine started, I want an immediate takeoff. The airspace has already been cleared. Roger that. We definitely do not have the authority to clear airspace in the private protection industry. I've never heard of that happening. Sometimes clients will wait a considerable time on the tarmac before departure. We do a lot of work in Los Angeles and in New York. They will use what we call FBOs, those are the private air terminals. They will use those at major airports, but oftentimes their FBOs that, that we use are in smaller regional airports uh, close to major airports. You probably would not roll out the blue carpet and have a, uh, a ceremony on the tarmac as you're getting them into the aircraft. It would probably be a covert departure. Nothing for Mars, Chief. Almost boring. What's our motto? Boring is always best. You would definitely not line up all of your detailed vehicles in this manner, having everybody stand there. This is something I've never seen. I can guarantee you they wouldn't have their private security helicopter hovering over the, over the runway, too. That would not be allowed. They mentioned get the cleanup team in here. We don't have cleanup teams for when principals are assassinated. Uh, the only cleanup team you're going to need is, is for your career because it's probably going to be over if something like this happened. We have people visit every location they're going to go days in advance, meet with points of contact, plan what route they're going to take in and out of that building. We have to plan safe houses. We have to know the closest level one trauma center in case there is an incident like this where someone gets shot or hurt. We have to have safe houses, which might be a police station close by or someplace we know we can bring the principal if there's a problem. There's contingencies for everything, but I can tell you assassinations like this of principals, extremely rare. I would say I would give it a one just because I don't want to give anybody a zero. In a populated place, a department store, I always walk ahead of you. I don't like more than five feet between us, so if you ditch me because my back is to you, that would be too far. We don't walk in front of the principal. You don't do that because you can't see them. If you're a one-man detail, like he is in this scenario, you protocol would say usually to the rear right, just offset, not directly behind them, but offset to the rear right. Now, they approach a door. Are you gonna just step out in front and maybe get that door for him? Sure, you can do that. You have visual all the time and you're staying in close proximity. Might you have a principal that says, don't get the door for me. I don't like people getting doors for me. Yeah, I've, I've had that too. So it all depends on the preference of them, but you're definitely not gonna walk in front of them because you know what happens? You turn around and they're gone. The risk of being ungentlemanly, I can't carry bags. My hands always have to be free. People do get bags here and there. Are we used to exclusively do that and we're loading their packages and not watching them and jeopardizing security? No, we're not. Do you? help your principal when you're getting him into a car, put a bag in the trunk and take that from this is a this is a customer service based business. What is it that you look for exactly? Before he decides he's going to walk out and, and chat with her and tell her a little bit about what he does. He you see he glances over to the dressing room area that as as far as I could see in the scene, she's the only one there. He feels comfortable. Put the guy in the coat. What about him? It's me. Why is he wearing a coat? I don't know. I don't know either. There's two kind of things I'd be looking for. One of them would be someone who has an unnatural interest in my principal. They're watching them. They seem to be in every store they're in. That would be that would raise alarms for me. Also, there could be a threat by somebody just like in regular life, any place that that threat might not even know who your principal is or that you're even there. But sometimes, you know, things happen in public where somebody could, maybe there's fights that could break out, or maybe there's somebody who's an emotionally disturbed person visibly, you can see. Those are things you'd want to keep an eye on. We have a, a rigorous training program for our agents. 
to conduct protection operations. I would also add that there's only so much you can do in training for observation skills. Some people have innate, really well inherent observation skills, but there, it is also a learned skill. It's something you have to put time into and, and discipline and you can learn it. I would probably give that first scene maybe a four, but the second scene I like. I think it's pretty realistic actually, so I'm gonna give that one an eight. Stay down, the bullet can pierce the windows, but he can't get through the armored metal. So Sierra Zulu 79 status zero thumb suckers. He's maintaining calm, he's go maintaining radio communications to make sure he gets help there as quickly as possible. That's the first thing to do. And he's trying to keep her calm and guide her in what to do. They have a high-powered rifle that went through the ballistic glass, but won't go through the armor. So he has to stay down. She has to stay down to try and maintain safety. Would I exit that armored vehicle not knowing exactly where the threat is out there to accommodate that and maybe get a picture with my phone to try and find them? No. That part I think is unrealistic. That other agent, they make it very clear, is what we call a DOA or a dead on arrival. That person is not someone who needs medical attention. You might want to climb right on top of them to get that vehicle out of there. This is a this is a dire situation. <laughs> Performance driving is being able to do one of those J turns, which is a fancy way for turning around very quickly and being able to just being able to drive at a high rate of speed in reverse. It's not that easy. So these are things that you would train in. That's an armored vehicle. They have special training, which I've been to, and my agents, many of them have been to, to drive armored vehicles. They're much heavier than a regular vehicle. They handle much differently. They stop slower. They accelerate slower. Take care of the pee. God. So he gets off the X. I like that. When he stops, he has his follow vehicle with him. I like that. That's where the realism stops. The problem with law enforcement officers, uh, if there is one using this type of work, is that it's very different law enforcement work. Someone has a gun, there's a bad guy, somebody who's shooting people, you go towards them. But in protection work, that's not your problem. I give it a, an eight. That's part of our job, right? To take a shot for a client, a principal. What I don't like is that he pulls his weapon immediately. He spots this person that he identifies as a threat. Nobody else has. He would probably be the person tackled if he did that. I can tell you when these awards, and I've, been, I've done security at many of them, there's no weapons allowed. Even off-duty police officers who are now hired to do protection services at these venues, they're not allowed to bring weapons in. Nobody gets weapons in. That's the idea. It's a weapons-free environment. What we do is what, um, a heightened sense of observation, obviously, because it's a big crowd. But the good news is at those large award shows like that, not just anybody can get in there. They're vetted. You know, people are on, on guest list with credentials. I've worked those lines checking those credentials for people to get in. With that being said, can just like in this scenario, can somebody get uh, press credentials, perhaps. I mean, doesn't take much to get them nowadays. And I've seen that where someone with press credentials has gotten into a green room at an event they shouldn't have been at. They weren't a legitimate journalist. Everybody probably has their own security. They don't get to bring them in and sit at their table with them. Those people at most would be backstage waiting and observing. It's a rotation. As the celebrities come out, their security person waits and then escorts them back out to their green room or wherever they're going to exit. Also, sometimes I've been at events where they hired one company to do all the security for these people. So you would have, though, someone assigned to specifically escorting them back and forth, all of these people to wherever they're going till they get to their um, to their own uh, exit or security team. My firm was was hired at one point to do large scale political event with multiple presidential candidates, and I had to provide probably 40 agents because we would have someone assigned to each one of those candidates the entire time they were there. I'll give it a six. I want to introduce you to someone, John Diggle. He'll be accompanying you from now on. I don't need a babysitter. Having clients that oppose having protection services or they have it against their will is something that definitely happens. I don't want there to be any confusion, Mr. Queen. My ability to keep you from harm will outweigh your comfort. Do we have an agreement?
You don't talk to a principal that way that he does, where you call all the shots. I like to point this out where ultimately the client really does make the final decisions, even with the president of the United States. Got your eyes open? That's what I'm here for, sir, that and answering patronizing questions. They don't want you following them around with an earpiece on and making it very high profile that they have a security. You might sit in the corner of the room and just observe things. Get out! I have to get you out of here. No, that, that. So you're always going to watch the people in close proximity to your principal. You're going to see if anyone has an unnatural uh, focus or a uh, level of attention on your principal. You're going to watch for things, anything that might be suspicious or, or seem uh, like somebody could be unstable or dangerous. And anytime they interact with someone, you're going to just keep an eye on that. You're not going to hover over there uh, around their back and, and ready to attack anyone at any time. It's unrealistic. This is not a high realism rating, no, for multiple reasons. I, I would give it a, uh, I'd give it a two.